Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and this morning I'm looking at a book which has come in from LexisNexis, and it's one that I find fascinating. It's a statement on the Bribery Act. It's this book here, and we know it as Lissack and Horlick on Bribery, and is written by Richard Lissack, Queen's Counsel, and Fiona Horlick. Um, the book itself, it's not 500 pages, it's actually 400 odd pages. Good index at the back. Um, the actual legislation itself is contained quite usefully in Appendix 1, and Appendix 2 has uh, some uh, additional MOJ final guidance notes, which I think people will find of, of assistance. The book is a contributor-led book. So what you've got is, you can see here for the various chapters, the names of the people who have been compiling it. And it, it's a very important, uh, eminent list. Then you've got the actual content itself. Paragraph numbering at the sides, which is very helpful, and virtually no use of footnotes, which I think is, again, important. It is a standard classic work, without a doubt and it's something that everybody really should be uh, bearing in mind at the moment. Let me tell you a bit about it from our review. The review is on the web and in the journals, and it's given the title A Very Timely Introduction, A Complete Guide to the Bribery Act 2010. This is what we say. The long arm of the law is a common enough expression, but seldom has legislation had a longer arm than the United Kingdom's Bribery Act 2010, all of which is explained with insight, erudition and clarity in this excellent work of reference uh, from LexisNexis Butterworths. Now, as the learned authors set out, that's Richard Lissack and uh, Fiona Horlick, um, they are observing here that the Bribery Act 2010 has changed the legal landscape in a number of respects. Entirely new, for example, is the concept of corporate liability for both the primary and secondary offences of bribery. The concept of fixing senior officers at a corporation with criminal liability for its li um, uh, liability for its bribery is also new, and that's one that has worried a few people. New too is the applicability of the statute worldwide, not just for commercial entities, but to others, all enumerated and explained in the guide. Few would disagree, I think, with the author's view that the UK's approach to bribery and corruption has been changed by this significant piece of legislation that we now have on the books. You can run, but you can't hide from the jurisdictional reach of the Bribery Act 2010. That's really what's caused the controversy as to what bits should actually be introduced and so forth. What the authors Lissack and Horlick have done with their team of expert contributors from both sides of the Atlantic is to provide a guide to the Act which is both practical and accessible, and they've amply succeeded in our view with their objective. Even by glancing at the contents, you're reassured that just about um, anything or everything that you need to know in relation to this legislation has been covered. Initial chapters examine the background of the Act from its history and context to UK legislation enacted prior to the Act. Chapter 4 itself deals with the Act, followed by a lot of vexed questions covering it in succeeding chapters. Chapter 5 being quite important, I think. When is a benefit a bribe? This chapter provides guidance on such issues as corporate hospitality, gifts and benefits, as well as facilitation payments. Don't worry, they're all explained here, and I think that's something that, that one would want to turn to quite quickly. As you might expect, the guide in almost about 500 were, uh, pages provides extensive appendices and tables of cases and so on. It deals with every conceivable relevant issue we can currently think of. I'm sure that there may be more creativity in this area in the future, but at the moment it looks at the issues, the penalties, the remedies, including extradition, um, and also, of course, deals with things like specific industries, the defence and extra active uh, industries, um, including employment issues, construction and uh, sport. There's a particularly interesting chapter comparing the Bribery Act 2010 with that of its closest cousin in the US, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act of 1977. 
and its history of enforcement over the last 30 years. So anybody connected professionally or even generally with the issues of bribery and corruption covered in this brilliantly uh, explicated work of research should rush out and buy this Acken Hall Acken Owl as a matter of urgency, especially before they think of that next corporate invitation. So thank you to all concerned. This is an important step forward for us and I'm very grateful to have the guidance. Thank you. Bye-bye.